and I'm Christy Monroe. I teach in the political science department and I'm the founder and the director of the Ethics Center at UCI. Um, research accomplishment. Well, I guess I've, um, I've done three books that I'm really proud of. Not that I'm not proud of the others, but I fell into a research project just by chance and it's really a wish that I would have for my children and my, for my students that they found the kind of project I fell into. I was trained as a rational choice theorist at the University of Chicago, political economist, political psychologist, and I wanted to look at the limitations of the theory because that will tell you something more about it. And so I thought it would be interesting to look at altruism and collective behavior. Collective behavior is what most of politics is, and altruism is a very small form. And I tend to be an efficient person, so I thought, well, I'll look at altruism first, kind of clean that up, and then I can go on and look at collective behavior. And when I did, I ended up finding uh, people who were altruists to interview, and they were simply the most incredible people I'd ever met in my life. Um, and it was a project that really took me places intellectually that I didn't know existed before. So I did a study uh, using entrepreneurs, philanthropists, Carnegie Hero Commission uh, recipients. These are people who risk their lives to run into burning buildings and save people. They're not professionally paid firemen or policemen. And then people who'd rescued Jews during the Holocaust was the last group I looked at. And what that showed me was that everything I'd read about altruism didn't explain these people. That the whole concept that people make rational deliberations and rational choices when they think about moral issues may have some validity, and that certainly is the dominant theme in Anglo-American ethics, um, but that isn't how these people operated. It was totally spontaneous. So people would tell me things like, um, there was no choice to make, I just had to, had to do it. And these were people who were doing life-threatening things for themselves as well as for their families. So the people who rescued Jews during World War II in Nazi Europe knew that they and their families would be killed if they uh, were caught. And yet they were telling me that they made spontaneous choices, that they didn't think of it. One man who was a Czech rescuer used the phrase, the hand of compassion was faster than the calculus of reason. And I thought that was very interesting. It was really hard for me as a rational choice theorist to believe that the, they were telling me the truth. Um, but I spent enough time with them that I realized that was the case. And so what that showed me was that I needed to develop a whole new theory to understand ethical behavior and the way moral choices were made. So that the traditional way that we think about moral choice tend to be a Kantian analysis or a utilitarian analysis, for example, and that these people were doing something which was totally different. It was much closer to the virtue ethics, which is the idea that you try to, you don't tell children what follow the Ten Commandments or you know these rules or that rules, you tell them to think about the kind of person they are and that the kind of person they are then will become a good person and then they will naturally take good choices. But it was a little different than that and what it was is that, that I finally concluded was that the sense of who you are in relation to other people really sets and delineates the range of choice options you find available, not just morally, but even cognitively. You simply don't think of certain things. So I can give you an example of that. If you go into an uh, Italian restaurant, it's real hard to get sushi. It just isn't on the menu. And that's the same way that it is for certain human beings. There's certain things we just can't do because that's the kind of people we are. And I think that's probably been my most important uh, contribution. The books themselves, I think, um, will probably stand the test of time, not because of anything I did, but because of the stories that I just happened to find. And the people are so interesting and so wonderful and so larger than life that it's just a pleasure to walk around inside their minds and see how real people actually go about making moral decisions. And it's not the way that most of the ethical systems that we've been taught um, say this is how they do it. So I think that's probably my most important contribution. I listened to people and I recorded what they said. How has it made a difference? Well, it's interesting. I don't separate research from teaching. I think the best that we can do as teachers is to give them our enthusiasm for something and to give them a good reading list. So I think that what I've done as a teacher is I've gotten students to think about things in ways that maybe they wouldn't ordinarily think about things. I try to draw on their emotional intelligence in addition to their, um, to their intellectual intelligence. I think there's too much 
of learning from books and not enough uh, getting out in the field and actually talking with people, thinking about things yourself. So I just um, had a course where um, we had to, it was on war, and, and I wanted them to know what it's like to go through a war, a genocide, something like this. So I thought they should go out and do interviews with people, and I figured they would probably find friends who were in the Iraq or Afghanistan war. And in fact, they came back with phenomenal interviews. One woman interviewed uh, her grandmother, who was, her great-grandmother, who was probably one of the few survivors of the Armenian genocide in 1918-17. Um, and people from Vietnam, uh, parents, an uncle who'd been a refugee, who turns out his father was Gestapo. So the kids did these kinds of interviews. They had to go through them, then they had to try to figure out what it was that made these people keep their humanity. And I think in the process of doing that, they learned a lot about themselves. I think they learned a lot about their uh, friends and relatives. Um, and I think it made them think in a different way about what it's like to go through a war. Because mostly what we found is, is that there weren't any uh, great calls to glory. There weren't any um, crowds that were praising people when they came home. People just wanted to forget. One man who'd been in the Battle of the Bulge said, uh, which was a horrible war, he said the enormity of it all tended to reduce everything else in life to a kind of footnote. And I think when students actually see that kind of thing, that it brings it home to them in a way which is more personal. And so I try to do that when I teach. I try to get them involved in a project of some kind that will actually help them learn because I think all you can do is try to give them some skill and some encouragement um, and then they have to go and do it themselves. So that's what I try to do. One of the things that we do in the Ethics Center was we try to approach ethics in a different way. Um, there are a lot of centers. I had been in the one at Princeton, which is very good. They're excellent and they do things very well. Uh, but what they do is they tend to either come out of the theological perspective or a philosophical perspective, so that they'll talk about um, what Kant teaches you and then take that out to the world. And we try to turn it around a little and we try to say, okay, how do real people think? What is it that people do when they go through ethical decisions? So we try to approach ethics in a slightly different way and try to get students to see that there are ethical issues pretty much any time you interact. They're very small sometimes, but that who you are as a person and how you treat people in your daily life is a very important part of ethics. And so that's what we try to do. And I am, I'm always pleased when um, you get uh, little notes or people write you letters afterwards. I had one class where uh, we had a book that was a very interesting book called How to Live. Uh, our, it's an autobiog intellectual biography of Montesquieu and, it, uh, sorry not Montesquieu, Montaigne, and um, the guy wrote, he said, I'm graduating senior, I'm not, I've already gotten into law school, I don't care about my grades. So he wasn't just trying to curry favor. He said, this is the best book I've ever read. I've ordered all of Montaigne's essays and I'm going to read them over spring break. And I thought, wow, I got a kid interested in Montaigne who's thinking about questions like, how do you live and what does it mean to construct a life? That makes me feel good when we can do something like that with a student. I think that's important. Um, another girl said that she, t she wrote, I took this course because it sounded like a fun course. It was, I think the course was called The Moral of the Story. And we tried to talk about how people learn ethics through stories and narratives that we create to craft to sort of show us something about the world. And she said, I was doing a lot of partying and drinking when I took the course. And she said, about a third way into the course, I showed a, a film clip of a woman who'd been about her age, she's about 19, and was a social work student uh, during uh, World War II in Holland. And the woman described uh, seeing some Nazis take some school children, and she tried to uh, fight them off and wasn't able to. And she said she wasn't able to do anything, but she decided if she would, she would do something later, and she did. And then she said, I, we always have times in our life when we should have done something and we didn't, and it gets in the rest of the way, in the rest of your life, rest of, gets in the way during the rest of your life. And the student said, then you said, it's never too late. And she said, it was like somebody opened a door to me and I realized I could take charge of my life and I could change. I, she said, now I've gotten much more serious about my studies. And that was something I thought was really, was really important. So I think the, the fact that you can, through your own work and through your teaching, can encourage people to think about who they are and what that means for their lives and means for how they treat each other 
is very important, and I'm really pleased if we've been able to do that in the Ethics Center. So that makes me feel good that we've done that.